Let's do it. <laughs> now watch me just fiddle around. Coming soon to this theater. Uh. Dig it, bitch! Hey everybody, what's up? It is your buddy Brian and your buddy Matt. And we are here for another edition of CG Horror Movie Club. The stream where we watch horror movies and talk about horror movies and then bitch and moan and piss and whine about horror movies. <laughs> and <laughs> that's if they're whack. But generally speaking, uh, I don't think we've done anything that's whack yet. No. Nah. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Not my we're opinion, gonna, anyways. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to rectify that. <laughs> whack, gonna get some whack shit in here, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll just pick like some like directed video piece of trash that uh you know that's you know you're just better off like <laughs> never having seen you know like some generic like zombie movie or something. <laughs> uh anyway, folks. Uh, the movie for tonight is Stuart Gordon's castle freak and uh the link is down below in the description you can click on it and watch the movie for free on tubi uh it is unedited uncensored uh but it does have uh the occasional uh um advertising commercial break um one of the things that we try to do on this stream is we always try to pick a movie that you can watch that's not behind a paywall so mm -hmm. it's like if we're talking about a movie and you're like, damn, that sounds dope. I want to check that out. You'll be able to click on a link and watch it for free. It's either going to be like a Tubi link or a Peacock or, uh, you know, YouTube or something like that. You, were, uh, you know, we mostly use Tubi because really Tubi just has an amazing selection Fuck. of uh, of of horror. I'm like shocked by the stuff that's on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> lots of lots of great shit. So Matt, how are you doing, brother? How are you doing, brother man? I'm doing good, man. I think I I was fighting off the uh, the coof, and now I'm I'm feeling great. I've just been having sleep and and some of this uh, bullet, and uh, that was all I that's all I have, and feeling good now. <laughs> you whip you whip the Rona's ass. Is that what you're saying? I think so. I think so. Yeah. Good, I good, mean, well, good. if that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the thing. It's it's like you know we can never really know these days because it's like it's like oh shit I got sick. It's like you you know it's it's flu season. It could be the yeah, flu. Exactly. Could, could be uh, you know it's not like uh, the common cold went and fucked off. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, saw yeah. the Rona was just like okay guys. Then, yeah. You know now now I can retire. <laughs> then there's like variants and omicron and like necronomicon and all kinds of shit you know so it's like yeah, man <laughs> you never know yep 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 uh so uh you uh watched uh castle freak it was that this was actually uh your suggestion because you'd always wanted yeah. to see this um wow uh where do i start with castle freak uh last week we did um a movie called Subspecies 2. And the reason we did Subspecies 2 is because if we did sub Subspecies 1, you know, you would if you watch that piece of shit, you would never watch Subspecies <laughs> 2, right? And oh, did you catch up with that series by the way? Did you go back? No. And, oh, no, okay. I'm going to I'm going to try to do it tonight. Uh, I'm going to try to go back and watch 3 and then I'm going to go back and finish 1 just because the, the the second one just left me right there hanging, dude. And it, it, like again, the, the production budget was good. And then you told me that they filmed them both at the same time. So yeah, yeah. two and three Here's are basically show. one movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> because you know, like um, for you know budget reasons, they just mm. you know, uh, I mean, you know, even the, the like the like uh big productions like the like the uh, the Salkinds who produced uh, the Three Musketeers and the Four Musketeers, those mm. movies, you know, the ones with Michael York and yeah, um, Reed and and Frank Finley. I watched those yeah, as a kid, man. I remember that. Like I was young when I watched those two. I think I just watched the the, the third one. I never watched the fourth one, but that's funny, man. I want to go back and watch Lee. those. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are great. Those are great. Uh -huh. But yeah, the Three Musketeers and the Four Musketeers were shot back to back. Superman and Superman Two were shot back to back. And um, 
Although that was a big thing where they had to, you know, they fired Richard Donner and brought on a, uh, another director, Richard Lester, to make things uh, more campy. Because, sure yeah, you know, so <laughs> sometimes if you're watching, you know, if you watch the, the original Superman and, and, and Superman 2, if you feel like suddenly like, you know, like there's a, a serious tonal change. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like all the cringe parts of like the original Superman. It's like the villains are all goofy. It's like, oh, man, come on now. It's but, still better than uh, Superman Returns, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I'll just, dude, uh, Superman 4, the quest for peace is probably better than, oh, well, yeah. that's kind of cold-blooded on my part. But that's, that's got Christopher Reeve, so this automatically puts it. Uh, that was my favorite as a child, the fourth one. I really? Like the, I like the sun guy. Yeah, he was... He was they actually Radio made him canon. Man. They put him in the comic too. Was, oh, I don't know. What Bendis was his is. name again? Was he Radioactive oh, Man? No, wait. Radioactive Man is a Chinese something like dude that. from uh, something, like that. something like that. Nuclear Man. Simpsons. Yeah, I think it was Nuclear Man. I think it was something like that. But I just thought it was cool because, like, as I don't know, they got they they fought. And as a kid, I love seeing like fights go down. I always Superhero seeing, battles. I love seeing a punch. You know, and that's the thing about the the singer one was he never threw a punch. Actually, Kevin Spacey punched him. And I was just right. like, this movie sucks. Yes. It's to be yeah, it does. And that's why yeah. I fucking love Man of Steel, because they get down. I do too. And, and yeah. It's, and and it, it's, it's very 90s based. I, I mean, not all the Snyder movies are, I don't know. I like that movie, though, dude. Oh, and, uh, I, 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 I can honestly say I love Man of Steel. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I could go back. I mean, I could pick it the I'll fucker watch, apart. Yeah. But oh, oh fucking yeah. fight scene alone just fucking puts stuff to shame, dude. And, and yeah. when that came out, there was nothing like that prior, except for like Matrix Revolutions, and it still wasn't, still wasn't the same thing. No, know? and the, the thing is, like, that's something also with all the Marvel movies and the DC movies that we've yeah. still never seen. That I hope we will see once we get a Fantastic Four movie. Although I don't have really great hopes for, Dude, uh, yeah. for that. You want to see the Thing and the Hulk having a big brawl yeah. you know you, you know like there were like there was this issue of the fantastic four where i think uh uh, uh ben was fighting gladiator from the mm. shiar uh, uh a guard yeah, with the yeah 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 with the mohawk right yeah and he punches because like i mean you know we're talking about the blue-eyed ever loving blue-eyed thing here right yeah he can, he can, <laughs> you know he could claw you know when it's clobbering time he could throw down but but of course when you really love him it's when he's getting his ass whipped by Sony, that's yeah. even stronger than him, right? And just like, it, boom, hit him on the head, like drove him like a fucking, uh, like a railroad spike through the floor. <laughs> and you'll see a cross section of like the Baxter building. It's like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> that's sweet, man. And Superman, two, right. But you, it's like, like when I saw Superman 2, I remember thinking, you know, they're throwing buses at each other and everything. Yeah. That was the first time you'd ever seen that kind of a comic book battle being done yeah. and in like a superhero Man of, movie. Man of Steel, it, it, he kind of took... Uh, he the paid small homage. battle is the shit. Yeah, he paid homage to the, the two first Superman movies, in my opinion. Yep. It, felt, it felt like I was watching like a, a Zack Snyder version of Superman 1 and 2, you know, but beefed up a little bit. You know what I mean? And I like yeah. Michael Shannon. I like his two little speeches he does. In oh, there. he's fantastic. Where were you he's raised? Th- on a farm? You know, like, where, yeah. <laughs> where'd you learn yeah. how to fight? You know what I mean? It's such a great performance because he's abs- it's a total like uh, high wire act where mm-hmm. it's like between being uh, uh, really sincere and also a little hammy. Yeah, a little hammy. Yeah. A little hammy, but yeah. like, oh, just right. He, he's good, dude. You know, it's like yeah. he, he really sells. He's like, I have no people. You know what I mean? <laughs> that whole little speech he does right before he, like, yeah. before they fight. No people. <laughs> yeah, and then of course everybody. The thing is, it's like that's one of those films where people's beefs with it, I think, are very legitimate. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I understand. But I love completely. it anyway. Yeah, I'm just like it's like a guilty pleasure. Like, you know, fuck that. No, no I like fuck that. that. It ain't no motherfucking. No, no, film. it's an excellent. I like that movie. Film. That movie's it, fucking awesome. It and is. There's still, there still hasn't been anything for me like it. Like that's you know, I, I want. I wanted to see Super or Man of Steel two more than the Batman versus Superman. Way. I, was actually, I was actually like way more interested in that, you know. Mm-hmm. It's just especially so. when you see how Batman versus Superman turned out. Yeah, that movie was fucking. I, I ain't gonna lie, dude. That movie's kind of boring. Uh, it's ass. I, and the three and, hour I mean, version is three hour version is is at least coherent. Yeah, it's better, but it's. Uh, I mean, you get to see Clark Kent do Clark Kent shit, like investigate, and that was the one thing Man of Steel didn't have. Again, I'm not going to go off on and, that. But, yeah, and Lois and Clark it. and all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. you miss him, you know, and the uh, 
you know, and the and the uh, Daily Bugle. Yeah, and, the nerd. You didn't get the nerd. No, you know what I mean. And you know, and and that's what made Christopher Reeve's performance so special. Exactly. Was how he did like this sort of Dick Van Dyke act with uh, with uh, Clark Kent. He's perfect, right? dude. Like Christopher, perfect. like he just looked like him. He was perfect. That you know, but um. Yeah, and had that balls out sincerity to say, you know, I believe in truth, justice, and the American way, and yeah. not have it come off corny. Yeah, like you can you straight know? up watch the first Superman and Man of Steel, and I think you're good to go. Like they yeah. both offer the other; they're both compatible. Like this one doesn't have this, but this one does, and vice versa. Like I don't know, because I watched then, that first Superman of the Gang when I was a kid. I fucking loved it. You know? Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I, you know, you uh, know, you know. That's what. That's why. Like when I, you know, when I did like that little thing that pissed off all the social justice warriors. Got me my first social justice warrior hate mob. Yeah, boy. <laughs> it's like God. It took me like how many years? <laughs> but oh, when man. I did. But when I, but when I did that thing, it's funny because I was doing it, you know, you know, where like Soups is getting railed up the ass, bent over a chair and railed up the ass. I started writing it out like to be funny. And then by the time I got like halfway through, it was towards the end. Like I found myself like, I, 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 like, I couldn't make it a joke anymore. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> where it's just like, where it's just like, you know, that, that, that that's a character that's so incredibly special. Yeah. To, totally. To me and to so many people. Yeah. Because, oh my God, he's like the alpha chat. He's Superman. Yeah, he's he's God pimp, he's God mode. You know what I right? mean? Like, yeah. And what and he can do anything he wants, and what does he do? He he fucking throws down for us. Oh yeah, for sure. Right. And 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 I'll say this too. Another cool thing about Superman is he's got all these different aliases. You know, he's yes. uh he's got the the you know Clark Kent. He's got Clark Kent from or, okay Clark Kent from Metropolis, which is fucking nerd. Then he's got Clark Kent from Smallville, which he's yes. just all American boy. Then yep. he's got Kal El. You know yep. what I mean? The alien yep. persona. Then he has Superman. That's four yeah. different sub personas. You know? Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Oh, but um, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I was hoping that we would get uh, a Man of Steel too. I, I don't I think, think we, we will. I, I, I don't I think, think we will. will. I, I, I don't. I, I don't I see it. I have a weird it. feeling. I have a weird feeling. Like it's gonna pop out like randomly someday. I don't think well, so, but I have a weird feeling. Like because um, I don't know. I just have a weird feeling we're gonna get one. It's just DC. It's just Warner Brothers that has never really figured out what to do. Yeah. Right. Uh, at one point, that I, I had high hopes when they brought Mark Millar on, right? Mm. Because I was like, "All right, then this is the guy who does who laid down the blueprint for the Marvel movie universe." Yeah, right? his movies are just fun. His comics are fun. You yeah. know, he even says he writes comics for people that don't like comics. You know, and yeah. he tries to make them like movie accessible, kind of. You know, and uh, but, yeah. I, I think he'd be perfect, dude. Like. Get him on a team to, to, to do part two, maybe they, they get rid did. Of Snyder, maybe. Oh no shit! But then he, I think he left, and I think it's mm. probably because he realized he was talking to a, to a wall. Yeah, because right? by the second movie, dude, they, they gotta have a little more hope in it and a little more. You know what I mean? That was what holy was shit, from the first one. man! It's Dude, just it was nineties. Like, it was Death of Superman. Right, and it's and, and and you know it's like, do I like the fact that there can be R rated um, uh, superhero movies now? Yeah, but. We're talking about bats and soups, man. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? You gotta. There's a certain point. You you have a certain responsibility. No, yeah, it's a responsibility. Yeah, it's definitely you got to walk that line and you got to go back and forth with with it. You know what I mean? It's weird because like the DC, like all the heroes, they're all gods. I mean, even the ones that are not gods, yeah. they're yep. fucking gods. You know, and yeah. then the Marvel characters are all like monsters. You know, yeah, which is why I always preferred Marvel to DC when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, Marvel's right, because I was a monster more, guy too. You got like fifty fucking badass characters. You know, like you could kind of name them all, and then DC's got like they were more maybe, colorful, maybe DC... fifteen or something. You know, yeah, and a lot of them were corny as fuck. Yeah, right. Like, and... I like Demon and Lobo and Swamp Thing and right. You know, Constantine's cool. I mean, obviously Batman's the shit and all of his people in his villains but yeah man that's that's about it i mean there's there's some more but it's like not not too much more no um at, le at least as a kid you know uh not that there weren't some great comics being made there were mm -hmm. you know the batman comics from that era were the shit but oh yeah yeah and, and of course swamp thing bernie wrightson's run with len ween oh, yeah. was you know i mean as, as a as a little kid man 
Oh, what, what yeah. got me into in the comics? Horror comics, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then you discover the superhero stuff and everything, and you just fall in love, fall in love with, fall in love with the medium. But yeah, monsters were always something that uh, that you know. I just I, I don't remember a time really in my life. I don't think I could think back far enough. I don't think I have memories that go back far enough where I didn't love monsters. Yeah, yeah. Um. Now, as for monster comics, uh, I um, there have uh, Full Moon uh, actually came out with a subspecies comic and a Dollman comic, I think, and a Demonic Toys comic, and um, uh, but anyway, I, I haven't had a look at them yet. But I right. uh, <coughs> procured some mm, copies under uh, nefarious circumstances, <laughs> um, and we'll be taking a look at them uh, at, at at some point. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, subspecies yeah. one I'm especially uh, curious about. You got to fucking put it up on the screen or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm take a gander. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I, I haven't. I haven't. I, I took. I took. I took like a quick, 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 quick peek at it. But uh, yeah. Um, I don't know if I should give people a. Yeah, you know what? Um, last time, to- last time we did uh, subspecies two, which was a Charles Band production, a Full Moon production, and. Uh, I gave like a little history of um, Charles Band and Full Moon Productions. Let me just go over a little bit of that again. And uh, everybody in the chat, thank you so much for turning out. We love you and appreciate you. Um, and forgive me if uh, if you're hearing this for the second time. Charles Band's father was Albert Band. Albert Band came from uh, Italy. He was an Italian filmmaker. Came to Hollywood, uh, made a couple of movies, uh, the most famous of which is I Bury the Living with, with Richard Boone, which is a great kick-ass horror movie up until the very end. <laughs> and everything goes to shit. Um, uh, Charles Band is a guy who uh, whose thing has always been to put together a low-budget movie studio, crank out some movies, uh, fold up, and then uh, uh, disappear for like a year or two, and then come back and uh with a new studio and um one of those was uh was um full moon and full moon was basically the only studio that was making horror movies during the 90s because the 90s uh the horror was such a verboten um a genre in hollywood that when d snyder went on uh, a tour to promote his horror movie strange land the studio told him don't mention the h word <laughs> this is a thriller right so yeah uh whereas now there's a glut of horror there's like way more than like any fan could possibly keep up with also because of the technology and because anybody can put out a horror movie now um Back then, there was a serious dearth, you know, uh, and Charles Band, I think, saw an opportunity there, saw a void, and he filled it. And uh, a lot of those movies are crap, and some of them are jewels. And uh, one of the ones we're looking at tonight is uh, Stuart Gordon's Castle Freak, and it is, I think... Not only the best full moon uh, movie, I think it's the. I, it might be Stuart Gordon's best movie too. Um, hmm. Now, now you see. All right, we're gonna get into the posters, okay? We're gonna get into the posters because one of the things that drives me crazy is if you go to the Tubi page, it gives away the monster. Boom. Right. Yeah, they should have. They should have just had. For that cover, it should have just been the sheet on the dude's face. Like that's scary enough as it is. It is. I think that's actually it's almost scarier in a way. Um, It's way scarier. Yeah, and then right instead you get this. Yeah, and it looks like Victor Crowley, like from Hatchet. You know what I mean? So that's kind of what you think you're gonna get: Victor Crowley in a castle. You know what I mean? That's what I thought I was gonna get. That's not what you get. No, 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 not at all, not at all. Um. Let me see if I could find a uh, because you know it's it's always interesting looking at the different uh, poster art for films, especially uh, European posters. Japanese posters tend to be really really badass. I'm looking for the one that uh, was the ah uh, this is okay this is the cover 
that was on one. the yeah this was on the cover of the this was the cover that uh was on the vhs when i uh first rented it um i remember vividly actually renting this for some reason um it was like a new video store that was blockbuster ish but it wasn't blockbuster and i was boycotting blockbuster because they killed all of like the mom and pops and uh we're a monopoly now but uh, you know there were a couple competitors that, that popped up and i was like browsing the new releases section and holy crap a new S stuart gordon movie <laughs> bonus right and of course it was the unrated director's cut that was and nice. yeah now that now this is a poster that was for the um you know for uh for um video stores right basically to like entice them to uh buy copies of the of the video but this is also pretty much what the uh what the uh, vhs uh box looked like all you see is a title castle freak and some stones and a uh chain with a cuff and blood dripping from it that's all you need sometimes you know that's all you need um it's a far from being a, it's far from being a, a a new trope in in horror the person that is chained up in a uh in a basement in a dungeon and uh through some kind of process uh becomes uh inhuman or no. uh, monstrous in some way and um uh, my god when you see the uh you know the uh the standard cover it just it just because part of the horror is like oh my god what's under there right right this is a guy who's been beaten every single day of his life since he was a child like 40 years for 40 years had like every bone in his body broken and reset like like in a bad way what the fuck is he gonna look like under there he was a and, normal person too. He wasn't. Um, no. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil no. too much. But no, no. Well, I mean, this fantasy. isn't tech. This isn't technically a fantasy movie. Mm -mm. It's uh, the horror, and this is very uh, is very human. Now, Stuart Gordon, of course, best known for Reanimator and From Beyond, uh, you know, which were his Lovecraft movies. This isn't a Lovecraft movie, but there are aspects of it that are uh, Lovecraftian so to speak like the ending um, what was that <laughs> maybe the ending a little bit uh well a lot of people don't really everybody knows late era lovecraft right with the elder gods and cthulhu and dagon and uh you know these uh, uh creatures from the uh outer darkness that are uh, trying to uh, invade our world who once ruled here and will one day again uh before that he was very much very much obsessed with uh the theme of uh human degeneration uh stories like the lurking fear uh the rats in the walls they were very much about um uh human beings devolving mm -hmm. into uh, monsters um he also did a story that the, that this reminds me of uh, that was called uh, the Shuttered Room, which is about a woman who's like a maniac that's like locked up in a uh, attic, and who periodically, of course, gets out and does murders. And uh, there's a movie that was made in the uh, '60s with uh, Oliver Reed and Gig Young that is uh, a personal favorite of mine probably more uh based on uh i, I don't know sent sentimental value than actual value although i watched it again recently i i, I could say it's actually pretty good but it's a it's a pretty good movie it's just uh it's very 60s and lovecraft you know? he uh he, he lived i mean he was inside lived like kind of a sheltered life with his mom right for a long time right yes he did he yes, was he like did. 20 something then he moved yeah. to the city yeah and uh <laughs> was a spectacular failure and uh moved back and um yeah i mean you know lovecraft's had a much less than ideal life and was a a guy who very much lived in his head and uh you know uh was um 
not a uh, didn't know how to uh, work as a professional as a professional writer. He was an amateur. He was an amateur all the way to the end, which is sad to say. And by that, I mean, uh, you know, like a publisher was like, hey, we, we don't want any stories, but you got any novels? Sorry, I don't got any novels. He had the uh, the the uh, uh, um, uh, Charles Dexter Award right in his uh, in one of his drawers, right? So he had a novel, and or at the Mountains of Madness, I think he already had at that time too. And you know, it's, in other words, if you compare him to somebody like Robert E. Howard, Robert E. Howard was a professional, yeah. right? He wrote in so many different genres because that's what was paying. Yeah. at the time and so like there were so many different pulps so he wrote for the boxing pulps he wrote for the cowboy pulps <laughs> he wrote for of course weird tales those are the stories also that you know where we really know him from and lovecraft just didn't um you know he, he, artists aren't necessarily the best business people yeah right <laughs> it's a lot of a lot of work it is it is and <laughs> and i'll Takes just say yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, when I when I say that Lovecraft was an amateur, uh, you know, I, I don't even really mean that as a uh, as uh, as a slight. It's just tragic that uh, he wasn't uh, famous in his own lifetime. Um, you know, it's uh, I don't know. There's always something about posthumous vind vindication that's both beautiful and aggravating <laughs> at the <laughs> same time. Um, anyway, Castle Freak. Not Lovecraft, but somewhat full of Craftian. Uh, this was written by uh, Dennis Paoli, who uh, also wrote the screenplay for Reanimator and From Beyond. Uh, I remember meeting him actually at a screening of Reanimator uh, oh, be be before the Cuff, and uh, he is a um, an academic mm -hmm. and uh, a English lit teacher. And nice. his field of expertise is gothic horror. <laughs> and so we had a really nice conversation because I was an English lit major. And guess what my focus was on? Gothic horror. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd read all of the same, like, obscure, like, you know, uh, gothic novels and shit. And yeah, no, he was a really nice dude. I had a really nice conversation with him. Um, the thing about Reanimator and From Beyond is they have a lot of humor and sex, which Lovecraft would have hated, right? But that's besides the point. With this, this is just a balls out, poker faced, I'm going to fuck with you horror movie. Yeah, it's a straight up, this is straight up fucking horror movie. Yeah. Um, like it, I was talking to the lady about it, like, damn, this movie, like when you think of horror, this is, this is horrific. This movie in a lot of different ways. Yes. Yes, it is. And um, boy, when we when we get to one scene, uh, I've got a pretty good story about a reaction that a uh, 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 my, uh, a ex girlfriend of mine had when, we were, when, I, <laughs> when I showed when I showed her this movie. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's a family drama. It's very mm. much also about uh, about uh, cruelty. And uh, well, okay. Basic plot, people. Um, there's this old woman in Italy. Her husband left her for another woman uh, and um, left behind his uh, son, uh, Giorgio. It was like maybe like, what, four or five years old, I'm given to think, right? Because we, we see the yeah. picture, picture of him. He mm -hmm. looks to be about like four or five. So she chains him up as a form of revenge, she chains him up in the basement and uh, starves him nearly to death, gives him just enough food to survive and uh, uh, beats him with a scourge. If you don't know what a scourge is, it's what you would think of as like a uh, cat of nine tails. The difference mm -hmm. being that uh, it has um, little bits of sharp metal. Mm -hmm in the uh and the strands right yeah. and uh so it will um just rip your flesh off and so the movie begins and you know here we see this like uh this wonderful shot of uh of the castle freak in uh in silhouette classic horror movie got classic horror gothic horror movie imagery so 
we see her, uh, you know, beating him with a scourge, giving him like a little slice of salami and like a little crust of bread. Right. Mm -hmm. I think the cat makes off with a little bit of it and uh, she lies down and she dies. And Giorgio is just left down there. What did she die of? Was it like, I thought it was like poison bread or some crazy shit, but just, just old like, age. Yeah. Yeah. I think her heart just finally gave out, you know, I mean, she'd probably been just like living on, uh, on hatred. Yeah. You know, you know, that's probably the only thing that it kept her going as long as, uh, as, as she did. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's a great setup. It lets you know what you're in for. Hmm. And a lot of your expectations going into a Stuart Gordon uh, horror movie is that, you know, oh, this is going to be fun. This movie is not fun. Nah. This is a straight out balls out horror movie. Yeah. It genuinely, and the reason I remember renting it, I realize now, is because this was one of a handful of movies that I have seen one of a handful of horror movies that my jaded ass has seen that I was genuinely shaken by. Mm. There are parts of this movie that, that fucked with me and that's yeah, still, it that. still fuck with me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's sad too. It's like, and what happens to the freak is, you know, he kind of becomes what, you know, what happened to him. He becomes the, I forget the, the, the victim becomes the victimizer, but yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, of course, you know, he's not, uh, you know, you can't hold him responsible No, uh -uh. for, for anything because he's, you know, somebody took a, uh, innocent child and manufactured a human monster. Yeah. Straight up. And he wasn't deformed. I don't think at all as a kid. Cause that, no. that picture was from him is, it, you know, inside the, the, uh, the mausoleum. Right. Yeah. Or the, um, the, remember there's, there's this lovely scene where this, um, you know, this old Italian woman it describes him as El, like El Bambino Bello, a beautiful child. <laughs> uh, once again, uh, oh yeah, this was not shot uh, in Romania the way that uh, that uh, uh, subspecies was. We were talking about that last week. Yeah. This was sh this was shot in Italy, oh, okay. and in a, a beautiful old uh, Italian castle. Yeah, yeah. Let's get a little look at that. I heard about this um, probably, I'm thinking maybe about 10 years ago. That's when I first heard of this this movie. I was doing research on, um, I was doing Wikipedia search. <laughs> I was trying to create a new character. And mm -hmm. um, I came upon this movie. Um, and uh, prior to that, I had, uh, there was, there was this, this story. I don't know if it was a legend or um, if it was an actual historical event, but there was like this um scottish castle where there was a freak there that i don't know if he was a cannibal or what or the the i don't know if it was the jacobite time or whatnot but it was a, a castle freak basically in, in in scotland and um he would you know get out and do crazy shit and i thought this movie was like a, 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 i thought this movie was going to be that basically like they based it on that story it's i, I I'll, I'll figure it out later it's probably a partial inspiration yeah, and then uh, like this I, like one was I, in Europe or um, Italy, so it's just like, oh, it's crazy, man. Well, that's pretty crazy that that was going on in Scotland, because in Scotland, yeah. we also had that notorious cannibal family that the yeah, Hills Sean, Have Eyes is based on. Shawnee Bean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and, it was a whole is, cave full of them, of these like yeah. inbred degenerate motherfuckers. Very yeah. Lovecraftian. Yeah, I drew a whole uh, character. I <laughs> I took that character and, and came up with some concepts for him, too. Nice. And that's how I stumbled across this uh, upon this character, you know, and um, just but but just thinking about it, there's probably a lot. I mean, this movie might have been inspired by a lot of different historical things, you know. And um, when you think about it, there's probably a lot. There was probably a lot of castle freaks throughout Europe, um, just because right. of uh, like the inbreeding of uh, royalty, you know. And, and just having, also remember you know, the reason you had a dungeon. If you were yeah. like a lord or a uh, any kind of uh, uh, a member of the nobility, was so you could just throw your enemies down there and just keep them there and fuck with them for as long as you wanted to fuck with them. Yeah, and shit on them and all that stuff. Yeah, um, you know, just you know, horrendous, unspeakable things. Yeah. Um, this reminds me a little bit of the pit and the pendulum in the sense yeah. that you do have the violence of the past coming to contaminate. Uh, the present. Right. 
so the um, Giorgio, the castle freak's mother, dies, leaves him down there. And oh. um, yeah, oh, God. And so um, a new family moves in. It's um, it's uh, um, Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton, who we've both seen in uh, Reanimator and From Beyond, uh, returning for this movie. Another reason I was kind of thinking, oh, this is going to be like, you know, kind of like a little goofy. Mm. <laughs> which is, yeah, right. Which it's really not. This is his best movie so far, in my opinion. Um, Jeffrey Combs. Yes. I think, but like his best performance, I and mean, he's a good actor too. But it's like he I don't is. know, he really sold like the whole, the whole like setup about what what happened with him and his and his alcoholism and um, destroying his family. You know, yeah, because he's a drunk. He gets into a car accident and uh, blinds his daughter, mm -hmm. his teenage daughter. And it's like when you're married and something like that happens. Even I mean, obviously you blame it all on like being a, a drunk driver and and whatnot. But still, it's like it's hard. It's 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 a strain on the relationship between the the husband and the wife. You know, even if he yeah, was thanks. sober, there, even if he's sober, you know, she's going to be popping pills. He's going to be traumatic, and he's going to be torturing himself for the rest of his life. You yep. know what I mean? And there's there's really no going. It's hard to go back to that. Like I, I mean, I was, you know, again, talk a little late. Me and my wife, we watch a lot of these movies. You know, yeah. and um, yeah, there's, it's kind of hard to go back after that. So they're carrying all that fucking weight into that castle with them. Yes. That's already horror enough as it is for yes. everybody in the family. Yes. Um, I always say that uh, Psycho was a benchmark moment in horror history because it took the uh, heart of horror, which had previously resided in far off places like Transylvania, and it moved it into the into the American family. Yeah. And and this is uh, this is definitely a case of that, although it's not necessarily specifically the American family. It's just the family. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they uh, they move into the castle that uh, that they've inherited. Naturally, uh, you know their relationship isn't great, uh, but they're I think trying to keep things together for yeah. the sake of their uh, of their of their daughter. You know this lovely young girl. Uh, I love the makeup here too because it looks the scars look very real. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so you know th this this you know this poor kid's you know blinded for life. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Uh, so you know we're seeing their uh, family drama and it's being intercut with uh, scenes of uh, Giorgio down below in the dungeon starving to death and uh, he uh, gets loose and the scene where he gets loose oh wow yeah like brutal <laughs> is 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 it so really describe it <laughs> so gnarly i'm a uh, okay yeah spoiler alert he uh like chews off uh one of his thumbs yeah but it's not coming off completely, and he's just like pulling the cuff. Oh uh, yeah. And it's just oh, if you can watch that scene without squirming in your seat, and it's the sort of thing where I'm like, very often if I see something that makes me squirm on my seat, it's like oh, they, like that's a cheap shot. This isn't a cheap shot. Yeah. This is just straight up. This is just straight up balls out. Brutal, 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 brutal horror. Yeah, and uh, the makeup effects in this are absolutely fantastic. Legit, they're really, really good. Uh, the gore effects, because uh, there is quite a bit of gore in this. Oh, I mean, yeah. It's a, yeah, I mean, it's a Stuart Gordon horror movie. You're, you're gonna, you're <laughs> gonna, you're gonna expect some. Uh, so Giorgio gets loose, and naturally, he's very hungry. And uh, oh yeah, and then there's, there's this moment that's a little bit like uh, a scene out of the Lovecraft story, The Outsider, where he like where he's approaching this form that he sees in the mirror, and then he touches the glass and realizes that it's him. Yeah, that he's looking at. There's a and, scene. Uh, oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say there was a scene with the cat. Um, yes. When he pulls the cat back into his cell, like yeah. I didn't know if it was. It looked real, dude. Like, oh, that was uh -oh. real. 
oh man and then they sped up the camera that shit was freaky as fuck looking i don't know yeah I was it like, was damn that they fucked that cat up. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> they didn't fuck him up, but they were—he was not happy. Was he was like, not happy. Damn. Oh man, that was like, that was that was you're brutal. coming. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. And, for and, orange. Like, Cause you're like at that point you're feeling for the guy. You know what I mean? Very like, much. Like, oh, poor guy. And then you're like, uh, and then you're still kind of like, poor guy. Uh, the cat. Ooh. Like you're you're starting to get mixed. You're st- it's starting to mix up your feelings. You know. But yeah, obviously, because but, uh, but at the same time, it's just like. You don't blame him because the fucking guy's just like got to be out of his mind, right? He's been reduced to an animal state beyond beyond out of his mind. He's 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 a he's a monster. I wouldn't he's even call him an, I wouldn't even call him an animal. Yeah, yeah, For, yeah. He's a um, he's a monstrous human, without yeah. a doubt. Uh, and I mean, you know, the title is Castle Freak. <laughs> By the way, I had a little confusion. Over whether when I first saw this, whether it was the title was Castle Freak or Castle Freak, which is to say, you know, the name of the castle, like Castle Frankenstein, Castle Freak. Oh, I got you right. And then I watched the um, the video zone uh, making of that was at the end of the tape, and they were referring to uh, Giorgio as the Castle Freak. So, this movie, this mo- I mean that that Castle Freak sounds cool, like, but it's like. It, it, it might be perfect for the movie, but in a way, it's like if I was behind making this movie, I would have a I would have a fucking hard time uh, titling this movie. Um, I almost feel like the title doesn't do it justice for how fucking it almost sounds like um like a like a um carnival or a carnival attraction or something, you know? Well, yeah, but y- you know, once you see that image of the bloody chain hanging from the wall, yeah. it's just like, oh, I know what this is going to be about. Yeah, and it's again like it's almost perfect in a way too, though. You know what I mean? It is. But it's just like, damn, this movie's good, dude. <laughs> I, I'm I'm glad you liked it. I had a I had a feeling that you would. It's uh, it's inc- it, you, you would agree with me that it's very intense. Oh yeah, it's 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 one of the it is one of the uh, I mean fuck it, it's one of the best horror movies I've ever seen. You know, I I put it up there with Thank with you. Psycho and um, The Exorcist. Um, uh, it's it it's pretty bad. Um scary and it hits a lot of different levels like i'm saying like it i think a lot of a lot of good horror movies it brings a different horrific baggage into another horrific estate you know what i mean with that being said the uh the whole like baggage of what happened with the the car accident you know right and then it merges and there's just horror upon horror upon horror and it just keeps building and building and building you know yeah until it becomes like unbearable yeah uh it's it's masterful. I really do feel like this is Stuart Gordon's best movie. Oh yeah, for sure. And he did and, uh, so the from from Beyond, right? And that was the one about the hotel yes. in in um, New Orleans. No, you, no, that, that, that was that was that was Fulci from Beyond. You think that that that's the Beyond oh, from okay. Beyond is a uh, was his uh, uh, he and and uh, Paoli's follow up to Reanimator, mm, uh, where okay. um, uh, um, there's a mission. There are these monsters that are always kind of floating around us that we can't see, right? And there's a machine that stimulates the pineal gland that allows you to see them. Problem is, mm-hmm. is once we can see them, they can see us. That's fucked up. I, I've seen a movie like that, a, a couple, but I can't name the, them. Oh, it's it's got it's, and, and that also has the team of Barbara Crampton and uh, and uh, Jeffrey Combs in it. And um, the uh, I, I I I highly recommend it. And the Blu-ray rip that. of that is <laughs> amazing, like <laughs> eye popping. Oh yeah, if you've never seen From Beyond, no, yeah, you, never yeah, seen you, it. <laughs> yeah, you got yeah, you got to see that shit. It's 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 definitely worthwhile. But you know, I was expecting something more 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 like that. Yeah, or Reanimator. And I was watching this. I was and I got about halfway into the movie, and I was like, they're not fucking around. Yeah, this is like classic horror, but fucking brought up to a '90s level with different '90s like introductions. You know Balls what I mean? Balls out, man! Yeah. Balls out! It's like you uh, take everything from the past and then you bring it in, just bring it all together and make a fucking horrific, scary horror movie. You know, oh, man. psychological, like everything. You know, right? With some really, really unforgettable imagery too. Oh, because. Dude. For a uh, you know, for 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 a great horror movie, horror movies are so much about the imagery, mm-hmm. and there's you know that's once again 
it's like uh this really come on yeah. now yeah it, it, this I is mean, way scarier yeah like it yeah, that right there, you know, like just, oh man, it, it kind of has enough. that, um, the little bit of the elephant man in there a little bit, but not sure. entirely, um, right. but way scarier. Um, oh yeah. That would have been the perfect, actually, that would have been a good cover right there. Fuck it. You know what I mean? Just yeah. maybe like just kind of scoot it over and you can put the title on the right. <laughs> right. But that would also be a little arty and, yeah. uh, cool. this, you know, it, it Part of the attraction of horror is its tawdriness, is the fact that it's illicit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that it's face. a little dirty. And it's got to sell. It's got to sell. Like, and you it's got to sell. You have to tell a million things in one single image when you're selling a book or a movie or a comic or a, or a movie. You know what I mean? Right. Like that. Oh, look, look at that black eye, dude. Oh, it's yeah. scary. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, you've seen the uh, Stuart Gordon also uh, did uh, that. Uh, that version of the pit and the pendulum yeah. uh, also for full, full moon productions. Uh, the guy who played the, uh, the female leads husband. Okay. Is, 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 is the guy who plays uh, Giorgio, the castle freak in this. Oh, wow. Kind of like an Orlando blue mask type actor. You know what I mean? Right. Sorta. Right. That movie was good too. And that had Jeffrey Combs in there, you know? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Dude, he, he, he fucking kind of owned like low key, like, all right. So this production, company you know kind of low-key owned the 90s you know oh um, without a doubt but so Not did that there was much competition <laughs> combs was up in there like bruce motherfucking campbell like just popping up in movies but i mean yep. i was like damn dude because I, I seen him in the frighteners you know what i mean mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where he's got his little like hemorrhoid donut you know and i, I just always remember I, i'm always gonna remember him from that movie you know but damn that fool because well, like, you know peter jackson was was a reanimator oh. fan without a fucking doubt Oh, for sure. He's like, I'm going to put this motherfucker in here. You know, he, yeah, he kind of like balances out the movie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I haven't seen it in, uh, in a long time. I need to take another look at that. Uh, I'm already seeing that. And it's theatrical release, actually. Yeah, I love that movie when it came out. I, like to me, that was like a better like I, I like Ghostbusters. But for me, it was just like something like a better version of Ghostbusters. When I was a kid, I watched that movie over and over. It was like just fucking awesome, dude. And Michael J. Fox, when I was a kid. That movie and Teen Wolf, I didn't even give a fuck about Back to the Future. I mean, I like those movies. I watched them a lot, but I, I loved Teen Wolf and, and, and The Frighteners, you know? And that was his last, like, big movie by Michael J. Fox, you know? And it was just really cool. Right. right. Um, so, uh, Jeffrey Combs is, you know, not getting along well <laughs> with uh, with his wife, Barbara Crampton. The missus. You know, she's, she's guilting him. She's guilting him hardcore. Uh... She pushed him over the edge too in that scene yes. prior, you know. You know, yeah. and, and, and yeah, <sighs> like that that that's a conversation that would have been had probably in real life. I'm just of letting course. You, I'm just letting you know, like that would have been said, you know. Oh yeah, 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 and, without a uh, doubt. Yeah, there's a lot of well, I mean, th you know, th th and that's the thing. This is so fucking well written. Yeah, and it's and it's yeah, fuck man, um, you know it it, it uh. It's made with a real uh, understanding of uh, of human nature and family dynamics, and also, I, I mean, you know, it, it, it's like a, it's like after a tragedy like that, it's like, well, no, of course, you know, she's going to be fucking pissed. Yeah, totally. And she's popping pills just to fucking for whatever reason, probably just to fucking distort the reality, you know? Right. And you know, the only reason they're still staying together. Is because they're they're not. I mean, it's over. They they oh, yeah, are not done. having, they're not having a uh, a a loving relationship. And yeah, she's, she's just like a single mother, basically, you know. And he's a single father, and they're just taking care of the kid. You know, what yeah. I mean, they're co just co-parenting the blind daughter. You know, that's exactly what they're doing. That's exactly what they're doing. And so, you know, this poor guy is just you know constantly being reminded of his fuck up, and you know. Human beings fuck up. It's in our nature. And, you know, it's like, how much penance can he do? It's like, when does it stop? It, right? When, yeah. is, when is enough enough? And it won't be. It won't stop. It won't, be. You know it won't I mean? ever. It won't ever. Yeah, because there's some things that can't be fixed. And there's some wounds that will never heal. Yep. And once again, 
that's that's <laughs> what this movie's about to a large degree. That's what horror is yeah. about as, as a genre. So yeah, he picks you know he goes and picks up uh, uh, this uh, ho ho ho. <laughs> The town, the town prostitute. The town ho ho ho. Straight up, the town fucking, the town yeah. prostitute, dude. <laughs> yep. And takes her down to like this very gothic uh, 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 wine cellar because there's booze down there. I was like, dude, he picked up the bottle, you know, and he's like, I've been sober for nine months. And he picked up the bottle like, dude, put that shit <laughs> yeah. down. Bro. Put that shit down, bro. Exactly. Put, the, yeah. put that shit back in the fucking, in the dust, you know? Well, yeah, because, you know, you're like, dude, you're making a bad situation worse. Yeah. Yeah, but he's, he's so gasoline on it and shit. Yeah, but he's full of self self hatred. So yeah. what yeah. you know, what is he going to do? He's going to go and do something self destructive. Yeah, and then the, and that one, and then the dialogue they have him and the wife. You know, it's like it's inevitable, dude. It's just going to happen. You it's going to happen. It's going to yeah. happen because she just keeps pushing him and pushing him and pushing him and pushing him. Yep. And, you know, and once again, it's it's just like if you want to punish the guy, it's taken care of. Yeah. He's never going to forgive himself. No, nah, he's he's gonna have nightmares. Yeah. Know, so forever. you know, show some goddamn mercy. Uh, at the same time, you you know, she herself, you know, is is you know a walking wound. It's uh you know it's a it's a bad family situation, and so you take this bad family situation, and you put it in a place where there's been an even worse family situation. Oh. And so Giorgio, who's free now, uh, watches them, uh, uh, you know, going at it or trying to go at it. And uh, and uh, he grabs this woman. And uh, oh, man, there is. Oh, God, there are moments in this that are just that are just so gnarly. I don't want to I don't want to give everything away. Yeah. But he uh, he disappears her, <laughs> shall we say. <laughs> right. And, uh, so, uh, the, um, then, um, you know, uh, she disappears. And so the, uh, her pimp who evidently is also her husband and the chief of police in the town <laughs> shows yeah, up right. very fucking pissed off looking for his woman. Like, Hey, I saw you leave her, you know, leave, you know, you were seen leaving the inn with her. Yeah. Well, you know, and she you brought her in her and she never came out. And so that brings the police into the, into the situation. And then you've got, you know, your classic horror scenario where, you know, you're just taking these characters and you're just squeezing them and squeezing them and squeezing them and squeezing them and, uh, you know, waiting for them to, uh, to pop. And uh, things just keep escalating and escalating and escalating. Um, the scene that I wanted to talk about was the one that I, uh, like, um, that I think is the most horrifying scene in the movie, which is when Giorgio finds the daughter and when he realizes that she's blind, mm. he feels sorry for her. Yeah. A little bit. And I remember my uh my girlfriend at the time when she was watching this she literally went like this like a, 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 an expression of absolute horror yeah yeah that part was pretty scary man and uh he was you know and just the awfulness of it you know it's just you know uh, Stephen and Stephen King like said, you know, I, I I try to terrify. If I can't terrify, I'll try to horrify. If I can't horrify, I'll go for the gross out. Right? <laughs> yeah. But that's a moment that's truly horrifying. Yeah. And true. at the same time, has real pathos to it. And that's a flavor, that's a combination that you can only get in horror. Yeah. I've and I've only seen it. I've only experienced it in a few movies. I, uh, this, uh, the Eye, the original Korean version, and uh, oh God, what was the other one that that? Oh, uh, uh, let the right one in. Mm. Um, uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, the original version of Let the Right One In. The yes, uh, the Swedish it's one. Canada, yeah, yeah. No, I just saw the you know 
<laughs> oh, dude, 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 dude. Yeah. That's, uh, that, that, uh, that's like the best horror movie of its decade, I think. Mm. I'll have to go back and watch that. Oh, yeah. Huh. I mean, yeah. Fucking, fucking amazing. Uh, and to me, that's such a interesting combination of emotions of being horrified and sort of moved at the same time that this creature who is without a doubt the most wretched being on the face of the earth actually has a sense of compassion for a because, second <laughs> what was that well you we got a little, a little well, speaking of family drama for for a second i would say yeah well i mean it's then he's you know, about to like do something else to her. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, well, he wants to cover her. And another thing, another another part that I want to talk about when he when he has the prostitute, she's like, okay, well, I'm gonna try to like, you know, placate the, the, this, yeah. this 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 dude, right. and she reaches down for 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 uh for his genitals. Yeah, and his penis is gone. Yeah, that was fucking brutal. I was just like, whoa. It would be so easy to make a like uh, nine out of ten other movies would have made like a little rude joke about that. Oh yeah, but there's nothing funny about that because you know that's probably the first thing that his mother went after when she started torturing and mutilating him. Yeah, because she was just jealous of her sister, basically, right? Right. Yes, because then we discover that shit was just sad. Like when you see that, you're like, oh, yeah, oh, poor dude. But then it's horrible. Like, oh. Right, and she left his balls intact too. Yeah, so he could run around and just like fucking still be like ready. So that's even worse in a way because he's gonna well, have yeah, that's the point. Testosterone surging through his body, you know. Right, right. That with without an, a, any form, uh, any uh, a source of uh, relief, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, it just you know, uh, fucking horrifying. What's up, pops? Pops in the house. Pops. Um, love me some pops. Uh, going to be doing, uh, as a matter of fact, tonight, uh, going to start work on a story for, uh, for pops, for his, uh, his crom con, crom con thing. Hell yeah. That I think people are really going to, uh, find, uh, amusing. <laughs> I'm not, gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give it, give it away, but, uh, let's just say AR-15 orangutan might be making a, a little appearance there. <laughs> we shall, we, we shall see. Um. But, uh, yeah, uh, oh, and, and I should also, let's see, I think I also have some pics of the, of the action figure here. What the fuck? They got an action figure of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember I showed you the Radu one? Yeah. Yeah, he came out with a bunch. Uh, oh, wow. like some Puppet Master ones, and yeah, this is the Castle Freak one. And I think there might be, like, a white sheet you can put over him. Yeah, the white sheet's like scarier to me. To so much me. scarier. Um, th for me, there's something just about like uh, sometimes, like where you you just have like a, a face with like a cloth over it or a sheet. You know what I mean? And um, like that. You know what I mean? Like the the elephant man. You know what I mean? Where it's just that right. one eye. You know what I mean? Right. Um, it's very but, horrific and terrifying. Well, because it leaves so much to the imagination. Yeah. And, and then you're thinking. And, you know, and, and 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 the makeup effects, when you do finally see what he looks like under there, yeah, is pretty fucking impressive, right? Yeah, because this is somebody who's been tortured and mutilated since they were five years old for forty fucking years, every bone in their body broken and reset badly, so the way he moves is all jerky and fucked up. It's just wow. He's and he's strong as fuck because he's of he's, course because he's been beaten so much and uh he just has probably nerve damage kind of like dark man yeah so well, like what, what are you gonna do like how, how dude how are you gonna hurt him exactly nothing could hurt him you know that's that's uh, towards the end of the i mean at the end that's what i was like oh this guy like this yeah well, would you want to have to go up against that fuck no i mean you'd fuck have to no. That, how are you gonna hurt? You ain't winning him? that Again, fight. You ain't winning that like, fight. It's like Batman versus the Joker. You know what I mean? He just loves the pain. I'm not saying he does, but it's it's similar in some. Yeah, but you're regard. not gonna. Yeah, you're not. You're not gonna be able to hurt him. Yeah, there it is. He's already he's already been hurt in ways that you can't possibly imagine. It's like what the fuck? What the fuck are you gonna do to him? Right. And so you're right. So um, 
And so there uh, ends up uh, being a little bit of a family reunion. <laughs> uh, yeah, because they're, they're brothers, right? Yeah, half-brothers. Yeah. Half-brothers. And uh, Jeffrey Combs' character is the child of the uh, the woman and uh, Giorgio's, of, of a woman, the woman that Giorgio's father ran off with. And, um, yeah, I'm not going to give, I'm not going to give away the, uh, the ending. Y'all got to check it out. Click the link below. <laughs> That's scary uh, this, looking. Woo. Yeah. If you, yeah. Um, if you want to see just a balls out horror movie. That's gonna fuck with you. That's not messing around. It doesn't play any games. Yeah, it's like low key classic. Went under the radar. Um, I think so too. I think on, so too. It's up it's there with like so underrated. Psycho and fucking, you know, Exorcist, and it's its own thing. You know, what I mean, it's its own. And it gets know. no respect. It gets no respect. It's, well, I mean, it, they might. I don't know. Like, no, no horror movie is fucking perfect. I'm sorry. You know, what I mean, no, no. So. No, of course not. Except maybe Night of the Living Dead, but in that case, <laughs> you know, it's not a case of the movie being perfect. It's a, a case of just loving it for its imperfections. Man, I like the Tom Savini one way more. I actually got that shit from the nineties. I got on, I got on DVD. Sorry, blasphemy. That's no, fine. No, oh I, no, I love that movie. I love that yeah. movie. That uh, was the first one I seen. I was like, whoa, what the what the hell mm. is this shit? These people are just chilling in a graveyard and fucking oh, big old like zombie coming through, and the the, the makeup looked badass. Oh, I mean, incredible. imagine seeing that and then have to go watch a black and white one. You know what I mean? Well, I know, I know, but it, it's just different. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know the black yeah. and white, and don't get me wrong, I love the Universal horror movies. I love silent film. I like sure, sure, all that stuff. But for me, it was just like, dude. And then you got Tony Todd in there. You know what I mean? Amazing, like, amazing. I don't know, bro. I don't know. Yeah, no, no, that's the dude. That's it's that's everybody's that's, opinion is legitimate, <laughs> even though yours is wrong. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I mean, what's it? What the reason I really enjoyed that movie was because it was written by Romero and it was written in a way that it assumed that you already had seen the, the original movie several yeah. times. It assumed that you not only, not only had seen the original Night of, the, Night of the Living Dead, but that you were really familiar with it, well acquainted with it. And so I felt like, oh, this was made for me. This <laughs> is made for the fans. And of course, you know, if, if you hadn't seen the first movie, that's fine too. But if you had if you had seen the original, it had a totally different level because it, it it's the 1990 Night of the Living Dead is about the 1968 Night of the Living Dead. Yeah, and it's just the, the monsters are scarier. Like, and you know what? I don't like I don't like the Zack Snyder one. I, I, it's a good zombie movie. Oh, Dawn? everybody fucking everybody fucking right. loves Zack Snyder's Dawn more than the. I know. Than the, I don't. Oh, well, that's that's blast. That's real fucking. I don't. Blasphemy. I actually like the that's original. Ridiculous. I like the. I think that's his best movie. Uh, Romero, out of all of his movies, that's my favorite. Dude, is the Dawn of the Dead. Dude, dude. Dawn of the Dead is the greatest movie ever made. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people like Day, though. A lot of people are like Day. And, oh, I, mean, I know. I know. He's got it, that one scene where dude's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, the, the gore know. effects are fucking insane. Yeah, where well, yeah. the soldiers are getting eaten. Yeah, yeah. man. Um, you know, the, 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 you know, and, and, and Dawn, it's like they're sort of painted blue. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, whereas, yeah, like, they're he's rotting. Like, he's like, oh. Yeah, <laughs> just biting that lady's shoulder in the beginning. Oh my god, you know, the like bite white. effects are fucking amazing. Yeah, uh, that one the first, bite. yeah, uh, the uh, I remember talking to uh, like that, that, um, that horror screenwriter dude that I know, the guy who uh, wrote the 13 Ghosts remake, and uh, <laughs> and what else did he do? Oh, yeah, he, that he's funny. He, and, yeah. Oh, and, 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 who, and who wrote that? the who wrote a treatment for the Bub spin off solo movie. Mm. Right? Who's, who's Bub? Bub. Bub. Who's Bub? Who's Bub? Who's How fucking dare you? That's Bob. Suck. Wait, hold on. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Blood from is... day, from day, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the the one, the evolved one. Yes. They made a remake of Day also too, and they had a, a pretty. They've made like two or three remakes of Day. They had this uh, TV actor that plays Jonah Hex on the. Uh, on the CW play him, I think on the, and yeah, it was Jonah Hex is on the CW. 
They had him on that, that Legends of Tomorrow show. They had a pretty good... I mean, the dude was a decent actor playing him. You know what I mean? And he was proud to play him, but it was just kind of weird. You know what I mean? Like, I don't like seeing, like, my Jonah Hex with spaceships. I don't know. I mean, it's cool and all, but I just... It just doesn't work. Like, I want to just... Right. This even the Josh, straight job, yeah. Even the Josh Brolin one, like, they could have, like, cut the budget even more and just made it oh, real... Oh, dude. You know, and don't get me wrong. There's they a lot made of big him actors. steampunk. It was they steampunk. Made- and the movie's oh, one hour long. The movie's one fucking hour, and, and there's a lot of good, a lot of good actors in there. I, you know uh, what? But, I even liked some of the the ways, like the, the, the one way they fucked with the character. Yeah, I, I actually liked, which was that he could like uh, talk to the dead. Yeah, well, I heard. I haven't read all the Jonah Hex, but I heard that he can do that. Like yeah. I've I've heard there's some books he can do that in some books. Well, you know, not the not not the uh, original version of the character, but of course yeah. there's the uh, there's the Joe R. Lansdale stories, yeah. which do have a supernatural element to them. Yeah, that's right? always good to me. I would always, I would, I would, uh, I, I mean, he's perfect for that. You know what I mean? He is. He is. But that, yeah, yeah. without a doubt, without a doubt. And uh, Hex is one of those characters. I forgot about oh, Hex from 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 Marvel or from DC. That's another character. You know what I mean? He just kind of yeah. like up in his up in his cut. You know what I mean? I, I like that character a lot, and it, I always forget. It's a sh- it's a, it's a shame that they had him on the CW and he wasn't played by um, uh, Thomas Roland. Jane. Oh, because Thomas Jane, Thomas Jane was actually uh, lobbying that. for that. Part. And he did the cartoon also. He voiced yes. uh, one of the cartoons. He he looked like him. And the the dude the dude that played him, I think his name was like Schneck or something like that. He looked cool, you know what I mean. I don't. I, I'd have to go back and read what Thomas Jane though. He's fucking perfect. That dude. Yeah. That dude's got the voice and everything, and if, he's a good you, actor. If you look, if you look for it, there's a. What he did was, he went and found a um, recruited a uh, special effects makeup. I've seen artist that artist friend of his and had his self done up. I've as seen that the character as Jonah Hex. Yeah, he looked cool. Like he, oh, yeah. Man. They should, it, dude. That movie would cost like five bucks to make. I don't know. Like, they should literally go make like a movie. They can't. Or, or oh, really? they can't make. Well, no. Well, here's the thing. They can't because they're idiots, right? Mm, the yeah. Shang Chi movie should have cost about twenty million, mm. and could have been like just like an absolute martial arts extravaganza. Yeah. yeah. Just fucking balls. And get the fucking stunt crews from uh the raid yeah, and yeah, yeah. Ong Bak. And uh, and and the protector, right? Bring those motherfuckers in and just show people something they've never seen before. That and mainstream American scary. audiences have never. Make it a little. Make well, it a little make it like Enter the Dragon or fucking uh, Big Trouble in Little China, just a little bit. A little I mean, bit. If you're gonna do that, I would I would have made it like fucking a little scarier, but all martial arts. But then yeah, like that that mysticism, the Asian mysticism in there, but fucking scary when it needed to be. Yeah, but also. No wire work, right? Well, I mean, you, I, I don't know. Well, I mean, because it is a fantasy and everything, but you want to see people just like doing shit in camera. They could have got fucking minimal. Tony Jaw, yeah, uh, 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 Eco Uwe's. We get that raid crew in there, you know what I mean? I would do very minimal on the wire foo and just really grounded and uh, and kind of kind of scary in some ways when it needed to be, you know what I mean? If, if you showed that, if they had done that and you showed that movie to, to normies, they would have shot their loads. Yeah, yeah, it would have made some. It, it would have made some money. It, it really went under, like like all these Marvel movies. Were it would have made more. It would have made more than the fucking Shang Chi movie that they they made that cost like two hundred million dollars. It would have been oh, like yeah. the. It would have been like the Joker, like real small investment, big giant payback. Because guess what? Some of us are sick and tired of seeing these big ten hole ten pole movies where you're just they're just throwing special effects at the oh, at yeah. the camera. Feels like you're watching a fucking cartoon video game. Fucking video game, man. Yeah, you know, oh, fuck, and, dude. Yeah, and no, it's just, I hear you. For the Marvel monsters, give those movies like a ten million, twenty oh, million yeah, dollar yeah. budget, you know, yeah. and make them balls, make those real horror movies, well, right? Dude, and like, make it another like a corner, a, a the dark corner of the Marvel universe, right? Wait, oh, right. what do you think of that that Moonlight trailer? Do you see it? Mm. I am actually hopeful. Yeah. I actually, I actually found the Moon Knight uh, trailer very encouraging. Yeah, that dude's a and, good actor, you know. Like, oh, can, oh, yeah. You should be able to fart that like nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I no, saw no. him. I thought I always thought he was British when I first seen him. I seen him in that Robin Hood, uh, the, the the you know Russell Crowe, the um, yeah. And I, I like, dude, this, this dude's cool. He's like a rock star in here, you know. And yeah, I could see him totally like nailing that. 
hopefully it's not too funny uh keep it kind of dark but i know it's a kind of disney plus out you know so it's gonna be a fine line <laughs> At the at the same time, there's also rumors that they may be introducing uh, Werewolf by Night. Ooh, that'd be sweet. If they yeah, if they don't botch it, if they don't fuck it up, <laughs> if we actually get a good looking werewolf and not like some CGI shit. See, that's the other thing too. Are they going to be able to resi resist the uh, temptation to do like a CGI were uh, 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 werewolf? Because you don't fucking need one. If, if you've seen that. If you've seen that movie Wolves, for instance, uh, I, I'm not sure if uh, if you've checked that out yet. The one with uh, Jason Momoa. Yeah, that's just tight as fuck. Right. Yeah. The, that's like, like that's like fucking the Wolfman. Like it's like it's almost like the that's like, all you need. Same, same universe almost, but just like 200 years later. You know what I mean? Right, and it's just like that's all you need is um is uh is is, is like really awesome freaking makeup. Yeah, he's badass in there, dude. He's kind of scary. That movie, that's one of his best movies, too. That, that shit goes under the radar a lot. That movie, I only saw it once, but I was just like, oh, this shit's tight. I'm going to buy it later. <laughs> yeah, that's on, two, that's on 2B2, folks. Yeah, it's just called Wolves. It's, we should uh, uh, do that one later, you know? Oh, yeah. Most, That'd oh, be yeah, a fun most, one, you know? Yeah, most, most, uh, most definitely here. Hold on. Yeah. That's so cool. what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. For, for a Werewolf by Night movie, that's all you freaking need. Yeah, that's perfect. And I don't know. We'll see, you know. Um, as for the Moon Knight movie, um, well, it's not a movie. It's it's going to be a series. It's got Os Oscar Isaacs. Uh, he's a, he's a terrific actor. The teaser trailer look, looked good. It's yeah. just it's so we're so reluctant to get our hopes up. Yeah, looks like he's going to be finding a lot of mummies in there, like in the trailer. That's kind of cool. Yeah, when he was when, when uh, it ends with him beating on some creature, beating the fuck out of a mummy, like in a bathroom in a, in somewhere in the city. You know what I mean? I thought that I thought was I, cool. I thought uh, I think it was like a jackal creature. Maybe some people are oh, saying. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Right, and for a second, I was like, "That's not Werewolf by Night, is it?" Because, <laughs> <laughs> of course, those of you that that aren't aware, um, Moon Knight first appeared as a villain in, uh, or rather, an adversary. And uh, Werewolf by Night. That's where he made his uh, first appearance. And he was like throwing a little, uh, you know, little silver shuriken, moon shaped, <laughs> crescent shaped shuriken at uh, at Jack Russell. They got to do something about that name, though. Jack <laughs> I, don't Russell? Know get, yeah, I don't know if they can get away with that name. Oh, what up, Bronson? Bronson Gorilla in the house. Uh, he says, American Wolf in London, still my fave wolf creature. It's it's not my favorite werewolf, but it's 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 up there. And I it's like uh, oh sorry, no no I was just gonna say what's it's 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 great because it's like a, you know a werewolf that's on all fours and it but it still just looks unnatural. You know the kind of thing where you would just be like like is that a wolf? No, that's not a wolf. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you were you were gonna say that it's hard for me because like obviously like i love werewolves you know my favorite werewolf movie by far is the wolfman with benicio del toro but i like um i like the wolf design in underworld uh evolution william the white they, wolf. they, they improved it they improved it for That's sure probably my favorite that one and then and the howling because the howling they got these big like demonic looking ears so yeah the, the wily coyote like, yeah that, yeah, that one and, and then the the uh, underworld too the, the that one where because have you ever seen underworld evolution uh i've seen all of the underworld uh, uh underworld movies the only one i liked was the one that was set in the past with the were werewolves and the uh and, and yeah. the uh, vampires that, that was my uh, rise of the lichens i think yeah that one's like blood omen that's why i like that one a lot i like that one a lot too but uh the the second movie they kind of jump back into that period or they jump prior to that where they have um the, the brothers, the twins, um, one got bit by a bat, one got bit by a wolf. So you only see the bat one, which is played by Tony Curran, that redheaded actor, dude. He's pretty badass. And right. then, which is, uh, I think his name's, um, uh, Marcus. And then William is the wolf. He's just always in the wolf form and they have them all chained up. Oh, in they have like, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's oh, yeah, fucking yeah. badass, dude. That fool. Yeah, that was a great little scene. He's just big white werewolf. Like, dude, I, that's why I, I like that, that one a lot too, because of the, that character. <laughs> yeah, that was that was that was a excellent uh, werewolf design. Now, tell the truth: would you or wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, maybe. Well, you know maybe what? Furries. I, uh, yeah. 
Hey, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> but, but also it's just like it's you know, I, 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 it's always intriguing to see beautiful monsters, right? Monsters that are, are monstrous, but they're but but they're uh, but they're they're not uh, they're ugly. They're not necessarily ugly. They're uh, there's something uh, something beautiful or uh, graceful about you know them. Who, you know who? Like I think either he wrote or produced or directed or all three of that movie Wolves is David Hayter. Yeah, that that's right. The, Fucking Solid X-Men. Snake. And does the solid snake voice, and then he plays like a, a lemmy type werewolf in there. It's pretty pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, oh yeah, that's a uh, that was a great shot too. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, no, it's making me think about the uh, about the werewolf book that I wanted to do uh, before there were like twenty fucking werewolf books <laughs> in well, comic I'm skate. Gonna, I'm gonna do one in like four years, for Butch Cleaver three, and hopefully no one else does the the concept I got, but. I'm gonna introduce my uh, my werewolf character at some point. I want to do like a uh, an anthology, uh, uh, kind of like what Phil's done uh, with the Lost Pages, where it's just gonna be like the two fisted comics uh, primer, where mm. it, it's gonna be like five to ten uh, uh, page introductions to all these different comics I want to do. Because that way, Brilliant. also, uh, you know, I could get feedback from people where they're just no, like, that's that's fucking awesome, dude. Yeah, if uh, that's a great idea. If I could afford it, because <laughs> that's also the sort of thing I don't want to. Uh, I wouldn't want to launch the campaign until I had like the book at least like half done, mm. right? Mm. Other, otherwise, you know, you know, what are you, what are you, uh, what are you showing people? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, for sure, half done. Definitely, I agree with you. So we'll, 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 we shall see what happens. <laughs> and just since we're on the subject of werewolves, let's see here. Yeah, you don't get a good werewolf movie too. Like they don't come around too much, you know what I mean? That's always been the case. Uh, yeah. Now they're because, of course, of uh, of the special effects involved. You know, for a vampire, all you need is just a pair of fangs. Yeah. Um, the uh, you if I, I, you probably I'm actually I'm guessing that you have never seen any of the Paul Nashi, um, uh, uh, Valdemar Taninsky uh, werewolf movies. No, those are really good. To check um, those out. Yeah, those are uh, some of the uh, some of those are uh, Werewolf versus the Vampire Woman. I think is is uh, is the <laughs> best place uh, to to begin with that. And then there's El Noche Valpurgis, which is basically just a uh, a remake. But if I uh, if uh, I can ever find good links of those, we will definitely be covering uh, some of those movies. You've seen and... Wolf, right? I know you've seen Wolf. Oh yeah, yeah. I you know what I love about that movie. Is that it's just like it's bordering on pretentious, where it's just like it's like, oh well, this isn't you know, this isn't a horror movie. This is Jack Nicholson playing a werewolf, <laughs> right? Right. But then you get to the ending, and the ending just delivers. Like, B movie for, three. For, yeah. For yeah, me, I, lo- like, I love Wolf. I love it too, and I I seen it in theater, and it, that was the time where where the nineties where it had to be tentpole. But don't call it a horror movie. It was only the tent poles. So it was Wolf. Exactly. And oh, well, Mary Shelley's yeah. and Bram Stoker's. Those were the three. And they used to sell them all three together in a monster box at That's Black right. Buster, a VHS box. It was called the Monster Box. That's right. Oh, up. man. I and forgot I want to buy that. it on general principle. But <laughs> in retrospect, about that movie, what I liked is James Spader. He's the one. Oh, fantastic. The He's the one made the movie at the end. Like, really. Yes. Brought it. He, just the scene where he's in the police station is the most terrifying. That, that He did a good job. And and the message of that movie is great, which is you don't have to be an asshole, you know, in order to not be a pushover. You just need to grow a set of fangs, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Because in that, it's, it's like lycanthropy doesn't turn you into a bad person. No, no, uh, uh-uh. right? It's just like James Spader's character is evil, an he's evil werewolf, because he's an evil guy. Yeah, he's just it's a just, social climber, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Oh man. Yeah. And of course, I I, I had to show this. Like, <laughs> I, love, I love to show this and just like ask people. Okay, cute or creepy? I'm saying fucking cute. I'm saying fucking adorable. I I love these things. They're so, oh, come on. Look at look at the, the, the look at this little mofo. The riled up <laughs> hair. You tell me. Look at that face. Look at that face and the hair. Yeah. It's it, like a little it, puppy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, there's this woman who uh, hand makes these, and oh. uh, I think her workshop broke down, uh, burned down. Unfortunately, I don't know if she's still making these, but mm. the last I'd heard, she was had like a two year waiting list. Oh man, 
<laughs> yeah, man. And because she makes all of, I mean, they're 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 made from like high quality silicone and everything. And yeah, it looks uh, legit. yeah and every hair she sews in uh, by some, hand. That's painstaking, right there. Painstaking. Look at those eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that kind of you know, might be a little sick. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> Look at this dude. This little dude. Oh, that's creepy as fuck. Yeah, with the blood. <laughs> 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 All right, enough of that nonsense. All right. Uh let's see. Uh any closing words uh about uh Castle Freak for these fine folks? Yeah, um I would say the movie's very underrated. Um, I've, I've, I've heard about it for about 10 years. I never got to check it out. Um, wasn't it what I thought it would be? It was way better. Scary movie. I put it up there with like psycho and, you know, a lot of the, cl- the, the modern classics from the seventies up until now. Um, don't underestimate, move, underestimate, underestimate that movie. Uh, check out castle freak. Definitely give it two horns way the fuck up. Make that six horns. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've always felt that this is a, a, a criminally underrated movie and that it's a buried treasure and that it is a classic. Oh, I should mention really quick that there was a remake of this. What? Yes. And I could imagine it, a sequel. I could have. I, I, yes. I'm like, dude, there could totally be a sequel to this movie. Of course there could. Yeah. But yeah, no, there was a remake and it has like nothing to do. <laughs> with this it's it, it's that one's just a it's it's a it's a, it's like a lovecraft movie and i would mm. say it's worth it's worth that's worth watching just because of uh of, of uh young Sothoff appears I'll at the end and is uh pretty pretty uh pretty impressive yeah it's 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 not it's not complete garbage but it's just like why did you call this castle freak it's like call something else dude call it it's something just else like, not it's like the dunwich horror cover. actually mm. It's called the Dunwich Horror, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Shit's public domain, for fuck's sake. Huh. Oh, man. All right. Dude, thank you so much for hanging out and talking horror movies with me. Everybody in the chat, thank you so much for uh, for hanging out. Uh, if you want to watch Castle Freak, the movie that we've been praising, click the link below. You watch it free of charge, unedited, but uh, be forewarned. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh yeah you might uh this one this this one this one's out to get you <laughs> oh yeah all right everybody you're gonna, get, you're gonna get fucked up <laughs> all right everybody peace and love and uh oh wait we gotta talk about uh the movie that we were that we're watching next week i've got a movie Ooh, what you got what you got what you got it's called savage land savage land okay it's a really obscure recent horror movie. Sounds familiar. It's, I, I think it deserves, it's one of those movies that deserves uh, uh, attention. It's like, because that's the thing. There's so much horror right now that the stuff that's good gets lost in the shuffle. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's an ocean. Yeah. And this was like one of the movies that I saw that like made me go EO and actually, uh, made it a little difficult for me to sleep. It's not a what? found. F- it's the, yeah. <laughs> It's not a found footage movie. It's a, uh, it's like, um, it's a four documentary uh, with mm. uh, still photographs. Okay, that sounds pretty creepy. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I'm in. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So next, all right. I'll 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 try to throw 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 together the uh, the link and everything everything for that like either tonight or tomorrow or something like that. Oh. Uh, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay scary. Peace.